Though Clyde shared the lessons in Netflix's new animated coming-of-age musical Leo, are delivered with enough heart to win over even the most hardened viewers to the cause of the titular reptile. Leo, played by Adam Sandler, is a lizard who has spent over eight decades living in the same classroom. Fort Myer Elementary School's hallways have seen hundreds of fifth graders pass through them, so Leo has seen enough of angsty preteens and their nervous parents. Although their interests and aesthetics have evolved, the students of the most recent batch are less likely to wear mohawks and more likely to be addicted to their phones. Their issues remain mostly the same. From his shared tank with Squirtle Bill Burr, a turtle, Leo watches every new group of children with a curious distance. The main lizard tries to assist the students, but as he does so, he frequently loses sight of his desire to flee. Sadly, he eventually gets to see the Everglades during the movie's conclusion, though not quite how he had hoped. Leo tells each pupil that he has a unique bond with them the more students take him home. Leo is adored by all, and in order to keep in contact with the kids, he begins to gather a few phones. Throughout the week, he texts each of them on a different device, offering advice. Squirtle captures Leo speaking to several pupils at once and broadcasts it live to their phones because he is so fed up with what he sees. The pupils are disappointed to learn that Leo's perception of each of them as unique damaged their bond with him. Because they would confide in him alone and not with anyone else, their bond was founded on trust. The students therefore believe that he has been disclosing their secrets to other students in the class. As this meeting is taking place in the classroom, Miss Malkin walks in and hears Leo talking. She is aware that the pupils' good behavior and unity aren't due to her being a good teacher, but rather to a lizard offering them sound guidance. After taking Leo home, Miss Malkin, and she have a heart to heart, he's hoping she remembers how eager to learn that little child was in the fifth grade. Since she has been a substitute teacher for years and has never been given the opportunity to have her own classroom, she has lost the love of teaching. She is adamant in her ways, and he wants to help. She is aware that she can support the stunts and succeed as a full-time teacher without Leo's assistance. Miss Malkin doesn't realize she needs to get rid of Leo permanently until one of her students wins a trip to a theme park. Leo gets dropped off by Miss Malkin outside of Everglades National Park. He has consistently expressed his desire to visit the Everglades, but not in the manner that Miss Malkin does. She tells him a falsehood claiming that the students were furious with him because they lost the tournament. They were no longer in need of him, she claimed. Leo is left to fend for himself and make his own way across the Everglades. Along the way, he encounters other creatures, but more significantly, he meets other lizards who reassure him that he still has decades to live and that he is not going to die. Lizards live to be 100 years old. They do not die at 75. As Squirtle and the other students head to the theme park, they are all concerned about Leo. Since they are unsure of his whereabouts, Squirtle informs them of what Miss Malkin done to him. In that instant, she had a change of heart and aids the kids in traveling to the Everglades in order to save Leo. He is rescued by the children in the Everglades with the school bus before the alligators reach him and his companions. For the rest of the year, they take turns working with Leo and Squirtle when they return to the classroom. Leo and Squirtle bid farewell to every student and Miss Malkin decides to retain them as class pets in her permanent classroom for the upcoming academic year. Regretfully, the trio finds themselves confined to the preschoolers.